wait for the stuff from Twitch to come in. All right. Um, so I'm going to start doing something new here. I'm going to start just making these quick one-off videos of Pomodoro sessions. Uh, hopefully this will only be 41 minutes doing just little things that I need to do for work or otherwise, like sometimes I'll need to use a little, do a little utility at work or for work or, or not for work or whatever. I'm going to try to keep these, these projects small, but I'm not going into it with any, you know, preparation at all. So if you don't, if you have questions, hopefully that'll be the kind of thing you can think about and you can, you can have the thought process, but this way, hopefully it'll break it up a little bit. You can, you can see what's going on. So I have the need to make a very simple little bash script. Uh, to change my to change my DNS on my WSL2, uh, there's a lot of fancier ways to do this. So if you know of a fancier way to do this, just bear with me. I'm going to do it in the simplest way possible, and in the most Unix philosophy way to do it. So we're going to just make a script that changes the settings in Resolve.conf. So what's Resolve.conf? Um, you know, I probably should get used to doing show notes too. Yeah, let's do that. So let's do notes. So, so the first question is, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write this really quick just so that uh, uh, MD. And so this, this I'll just write this as long as we're, while we're going, so you can you have something to follow along with and put it in the description. So uh, we're gonna call this uh, Bash uh, script. Um, bash script to swap. DNS uh, uh, from Etsy resolve.conf. And if you don't know what resolve.conf is, don't worry, we're gonna talk about that. Okay, so, um, so one, what is DNS? All right, so DNS uh, stands, is, stands for the domain name service. Um, turn my sound down. And what is the domain name? So a domain name would be like rwx.gg, youtube.com, something like that. That's a domain name and it goes with an IP address, which we'll talk about an IP in networking in general. Uh, so that's what DNS is. Why does it matter? So uh, why do I care? Uh, do I care? Because if, you're, if your DNS settings are wrong, then you can't set up your, you can't access anything. So like for example, let me break it using a container. Okay, so let's say, so let's actually break it really quick. Uh, I need to tmux in to this. Yeah, I'll probably have a better way to do it later, but notes.md. Uh, I'll put this to read me. Uh, I'll put it as notes so I don't actually screw it up. All right, so, so we've got this DNS thing going on, right? And so let's actually break it. So I'm going to run, I'm going to have a, I have a, I'm going to do this. I'll do it the slow way. Okay. So Docker run dash it dash dash RM because I don't want it after this. Uh, let's run, I don't know, Ubuntu. Okay. Ubuntu or Debian. Let's oh, just do Debian. Uh, Ubuntu. I, I don't even know which one's going to have what. We could probably do my workstation. It might be better. If we do, the, if we run my workstation, I can actually break that and that will, in a way that I have all my tools and so me. Well, it doesn't matter. So let's do this. So let's give it a name. Uh, name uh, resolve. And it's gonna throw it away as soon as it as soon as it finishes. Okay. So uh, OCI daemon fail create name executable file. No, not a thing. Well, is it dash n? I bet it is dash n. I never remember. Error response. Let's see, OC create red tab, container Linux, container, starting container process caused exec dash n executable file not found in path. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, well, there we go. So it's just, uh, who cares? It's this container is going to get thrown away anyway. So what is this uh, file? So etsy, you don't mess around. Let me put a thing here. Uh, but first, uh, uh, only, but first say they say only do this to a container first. Okay. I, I want to just put a warning here. This is why we do 
what we do. I could have done this with Tilde, I know. Warning. We could have done this with Tilde. But so we don't you don't want to mess with this stuff uh in just you know normal on your system. You could totally screw your system up by messing with this. Particularly if you're doing it, you know, the other way. This is why I actually want to use a workspace container because I have I have all this stuff installed in my workspace container. So screw this. I'm just going to actually make a workspace. We're going to call it Resolve. Uh, you can look at my WS uh, my WS script if you want. We'll make a username for it. I've been bash. This is my workspace script. I don't need to resolve it to push any ports out or anything. Don't need any extra mounts. This is going to give me a basic resolve. So this is. It looks like I'm still on my same system. I promise you, I'm not. Okay. In fact, if I have IF config, I haven't, don't have that in there. I need to add it. But so I'm running in a container right now. So I'm all safe to do this kind of stuff. So don't, again, don't do it on anything you care about. So if I do Etsy uh, resolve.com, uh, actually, let's do this. Sudo su dash. So now we're root. You need to be root to do this. Normally, you wouldn't do all of this as you do them individually as sudo commands, but we're on a container, so we're good. Now, this is what Docker does for you automatically it puts the name server in here. And it, it pulls, it's a local name server. It takes care of all the resolution and it has its own internal, Docker has its own internal networking system. Uh, so does Kubernetes in addition to that. So it's, that can get a little bit crazy because it's kind of like these encapsulated network systems that are there. Um, but hmm, it tells you what to do to figure it out. Uh, so third-party programs should typically not access this file directly, but through the sim link at etsyresolve.com, uh, manage blah, blah, blah. All right. So if you mess with this stuff, all right, so let's say we have a, a we're going to break it. We're going to break this, this instance, then we're going to pull it up again. Okay. So we're going to say name server, uh, like two dot, I mean, there's, this is, I don't, I'm free to worry about, I don't know. 8888 is the Google one, uh, so I don't even think I spelled it right. I mean, I am really breaking this thing, right? So if I try this and then I try to ping anything, google.com, nope, uh, ping, like, rwx, the gg, nope. All right, well, let's, let's fix it. So we're going to go back in here and fix it, right? So I want to get this out, put this back, and I'm going to try that. Now it sees everything. See that? So. It, these the domain name servers are these servers up in the cloud that are, are on your local system or in your Wi-Fi or whatever network that, that, that give you that tell you what the name is so that, let me prove it so like for example this guy that apparently is my RWXGG site so I can go in here and I can kill this and and make my name server done and now it doesn't access it but if i if i ping the ip directly you get the ip and you're good to go you don't have to have the dns name right so why do i care well recently i set up um so um uh warning only do this stuff in a container in a container first all right so why do you care well you care, you care because sometimes uh, DNS queries won't resolve for some reason. And it's usually because it can't look up the DNS. So the first thing you probably want to know is that you can do this to, you know, test your network and see if you've got IP issues. Uh, why do I personally care right now? Because when you use WSL2 on, on a work system with a VPN, uh, the, the, the domain name servers are going to be different than the ones uh, that that are going to do it. There's not cache DNS queries. Uh, I don't know if DNS caches the queries or not in this case. Uh, that is a thing though. Sometimes DNS can get cached, uh, sometimes not. But um, uh, I mean, there's lots of different things to consider when you're talking about DNS. There's lots of different things that could happen that could go wrong. But the specific reason that I care right now is that I went to work and I've been forced, I can't use my workspace container anymore, which works out of the box because it's using Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is broken for me, so let me just give you a background here. So Docker Desktop is broken after the last Windows forced update. I can't get Docker Desktop to work for any reason at all. There's this massive .NET panic and it's not within my permissions to fix anything because it's a stupid issued Windows system that I have to use for work. 
So I was forced to install Docker D on WSL2 and to get around the AnyConnect issues with uh not seeing all the, the 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 network routes and stuff like that so i've got that's another video it's another zettelcast that i did i'll have to do a video about that and show you how to fix that i had to write a trigger that runs this stupid powershell script that takes forever every time i log into vpn but one of the things i lost when i did that was the ability to resolve dns because i'm no longer using uh the host operating system for dns resolution through the vpn which would normally have take care of the problem uh how's it going tn uh that's a great question please put that go to my github and put that question in the ama in our discord and i'll ask it later i'm not going to answer any questions right now because i'm making a video with a specific topic in mind so um but i love those questions please don't i don't like losing them because then i can't i should probably make you guys a, a, a submission form or something uh so why do i care because i can't get on the network so this resolve.com file is not managed properly uh, somebody out there might have a better way to do this than me, but sometimes all you want to do is change the entries in your Etsy resolve.com in an automated way that 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 will maintain uh, your connection to the outside world and to the inside world. Now, if you do this properly, I mean, if you do this not the way I'm doing it, but if you do it like this is just the, the super, super easy, fast way to do this. If you do this properly, you can set up your DHCP routing and stuff to, so that it sets different DNS resolution for, for different routes and interfaces and all this stuff. Well, I'm not going to do any of that. I probably should learn how to do that and go through that and do that. But most of you out there are just going to say, well, I just want my DNS to work. So when I'm connected to the VPN, I just want to go into my Etsy resolve.com as root and change my entries. And I want to do that actually through a script that's safe enough to do this so that it doesn't break. Okay. So that when I get logged in, I can even probably trigger the script from, you know, on first login, it can detect whether I have a VPN connection. If I do, just change my resolve that comes. So everything just works. Um, because when you're connected to the VPN, you know, obviously they're trying to c c prevent you from directly accessing stuff outside in the, in the world, because that's the whole point of a VPN to protect you. And, uh, and so you can't do things, you know, you can can't access websites, but you usually have to go through a proxy for that, et cetera. So for all that reason, you need to be able to change your resolve.com. So that's why you care. Um, and so, so how do we do this? Uh, uh, how would I do this by hand? So, so by hand, uh, I already showed you this. So by hand, let's, let's just simulate this, right? So, so we can say, uh, D, whoops, that's a different thing. <laughs> uh, we can simulate this by forcibly changing our name server to something that, that, that works internally, right? So in my particular case, I, I have, uh, you know, usually you have two name servers, by the way. Uh, so, you know, for, for redundancies. Um, and as you can see, I won't be able, oopsie. I do there I, I know whoops I was gonna say. okay so so there you see I've got that and and then I can't ping anything on the internet at all I can't see anything I couldn't even SSH do or, or, or HD or curl it or anything you know I can't can't do anything can't see it don't have any proxies or anything so so I want to be able to change that over um, and so uh, so so that's how you would do it by hand so by hand you would go in here and actually I have this exact thing at work and I have, I go in here and I put these in front of this and these in front of this, and then I do this. And that's annoying, <laughs> right? That's really annoying. So, because I just want it to work, I don't want to have to, if anything, I just want to type a command and even that's kind of annoying. I want that to just be done automatically when I log in. So based on all of that, let me turn down the music. Um, let me turn it way down. I forgot to do the music because I can't keep the music on. Even even the stuff that says absolutely copyright free, my, my YouTube stream got blocked the other day, even though it said absolutely free. <laughs> it's a total lie. So so we've got this 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 thing. We need to change it, right? So that's how you would do it by hand. Um, uh, how could could we automate this? All right, so. So the next question is, how can I do that change? And if you know any shell scripting, which you should probably know at this point, uh, it's not too hard to change this. Uh, same virtual room as me. He was looking at pods and debugging as I was at time at reading 
at reading my pile and here been tweaking my resolver config and I joined the stream. <laughs> we, we, great minds, great Q. Thank you, by the way. One of my favorite sponsors, Q Macro 99 is joining us on Twitch there. Uh, so, so let's do this. Resolve, resolve, resolve.com. This file has been around forever, by the way. <laughs> and you can do other things in here. I mean, this, is, this isn't a video about resolve.com. This is a video about how to automate this particular process, right? But so, so we want to change these things. Well, let's think about this. I, I already know how I want to do it, but I'm just kind of trying to mock up what you might think. So the first thing I want to, I want to do is I want to be able to identify the stanzas for, for this. So this one I can say is external. All right. So I can put it external there, right? Maybe we put it as in all caps. So, you know, it's like, you know, something to do. And we'll call this one internal. Most people are only playing around with two or three or four different name services, you know, VPNs. It's, it's un unusual that you'd be connected to more than you might. And if that, that means you could actually name them something different, maybe we could just say the convention is, you know, you have some name here, right? So I don't know. We could, I, I would say if it starts with an initial cap, if it has all initial caps, then we could do, I mean, we could, we could make some keyword here. I don't know. What should we do? So we could say, uh, I mean, we can do this. We could say net colon external. How about that? Ooh, <laughs> net colon internal, right? So, and again, this is stuff that can be automated through DHCP and all kinds of stuff, but we're just making a script for it. So what do we want to do? We want to say, I want to find the stanza that says net internal, and I'm going to change every line after that that begins with name server, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put a comment in front of it. And then, and, and this one that I want to activate, every line that begins with name server is going, actually every line period, we could say every line after that until a blank line. I'm going to go ahead and change that into something that does not start with, uh, you know, a, a pound sign, right? A comment. comment. It's an easy enough thing to do. Uh, this is something I, I, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend you do this in production unless you know what you're doing and you know where it's at and everything. But it's it's not that hard if you're just managing your own containers or your own VPN or your own WSL2. So I'm, I'm not, you know, buyer beware, right? You know, you got to know what's going on in your situation. So how can we automate that? So we talked about that. Let's Now let's script it. Um, let's start to script it by hand. How about that? Uh, whoopsie. So we're going to script this by hand. Uh, uh, start uh, prototyping from on on other file. So we're going to start some prototyping on another file. This is some tri file transformations, which I've talked about in the beginner boost. I think it's like week two or three where we start doing shell scripting and stuff. So I'm assuming you know some shell scripting and be able to do this. Uh, but a lot of this stuff we can actually just do from the command line. We can go through the transformation on the command line and and make make those changes. Um, so this relates to parsing. There's lots of ways to do this. We can do this with regular ex expressions, but let's just start with a traditional Unix filter. Okay, so let's say, uh, and this is, let's start with that. So let's say, uh, actually, this guy, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go back into my resolve.conf. Uh, I'm now in a workspace that has uh, my workspaces directory mounted locally in addition to the container. So the stuff I write here will not be lost. Uh, but so let's just make a little script. So if I write a script to say, uh, what should we call it? I don't know. Um, should we call it? Well, let's, let's do it from the command line first. So let's do this. Let's say cat. Uh, actually, we don't need to do a cat, but... When we get into the script, you should never use cat. But for right now, cat kind of makes sense to keep it like from left to right or from left to right, however you want to look at it. So cat etsy resolve.conf. Uh, you know what? I'm going to jump right into the script. We're not going to do any pipe translations because I want to read properly from the file. And I know to do that in bash, you have to do it a different way. So let's say, let's say, uh, I don't know. I'm going to call mine toggle. I'm going to say tog, resolve tog, or resolve uh, tog, as I'm calling it. Because I just want mine to go between internal and external. I don't care which one it is, right? You can make it fancier if you want. So I'm going to use bin bash, user bin bash. 
uh, here because this is Bash. I'm going to go ahead and use Bash instead of POSIX. Uh, I've kind of given in on that just because I just, because I, I, I use so many of the, of the features of Bash. I'm going to use a lot of the Bash features today that are not possible in POSIX very easily. Mm. So let's go ahead and do this. This is actually be a good Perl script too, but we're going to stay with Bash. So first things first, we need to do a loop, right? Uh, and so let's just start with our loop. Well, I'll read dash, uh, is it R? I think, I think it's R. I have, let me go talk about this man bash, uh, read. So if you know, if you don't know how to do stuff, you can go look at it here. You can go look at it in your, in your bash RC file. I mean, in your bash, bash man page. So we're looking for the commands. I don't remember where they are. Uh, what are these case word? Definitions? No, it's not definitions. It's uh, commands. Is it command? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to find if I can get to it faster, but this is way faster than the internet on this case because it's local. It's a man page. And I have color enabled. You can go watch a video on that. Uh, just set your LSS, your 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 less term cap stuff. We're splitting. We're not to it yet. I'm trying. Is it functions? Is it command execution? I'm trying to figure out what the what the top of it is. Read line notation, kill, read, nope. Read line is cool though. That's built into bash. Oh man, it's like, am I I didn't loop over, did I? Ah, I'm good. How's it going? Uh so let's go to do 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 key map. These are all the options. I'm I'm trying to figure out what the header is for this. Uh, I don't I even know. I don't know what the header is. I'm trying to figure out what the header is for all of the. God, look at this file so huge. There we go. Where where are we by the way? I want to next time I want to be able to jump directly to this section. So oh shell built in. <laughs> I'm gonna try this again. Man page shell shell built in. Boom, boom, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try something else. Yeah. Uh shell built. Boom! That was it. So the carrot for the win. <laughs> now I can search for read. So it should find it faster now. Actually, no, we can search for carrot read and that'll find it at the beginning of a or not <laughs> damn denied where are you read i know you're here there's spacing well i don't know i got the other one so I, yeah i hear you though uh yeah, we can't really, it doesn't really help to look for, if you want to get crazy, let's do this. Let's do space and then a read. Ooh, that was nice. Yeah, that's much better, Q. Thank you for being the voice of reason. <laughs> that jumps right to it. Yeah, I forgot that. I forgot about the help command. I never use it. So the help command actually is ripped up. That's all the stuff from the bad page ripped up. <laughs> I always forget this. It would be so much faster. I've got this really convoluted regex to match it and find it. I could have just used help. All right, well, there you go. Don't be me. Be Q macro. He's better. Mm -hmm. Something other than man? Oh, my God. Right? Well, I, I honestly, I'm a man guy. But there's no color. I mean, come on. What are you talking about? I got to have my color. <laughs> no, I refuse. I want my colors. <laughs> There we go. So there's my color and my man page. It took me a lot longer, but oh well. All right. So one line is read from the standard input, just so you know. The reason I'm here in the first place is because I want to look up the option uh, that does not read escapes. Uh, you can do dash P. I'm pretty sure it's R. Yeah, it's R. I, I have it memorized, but I just want to talk about it. So I don't like using stuff without explaining. So dash R turns off backslash escapes. So if you don't have that, then yeah, does not act uh, backslash does not act as an escape character. The backslash is considered to be part of the line. In particular, a uh, backslash new line pair may not 
then be used as a line continuation. So backslash is used as a line continuation. It sometimes can ruin your day. So this says don't use backslash to escape. So I it's it's something that we regularly use, and that was kind of a tangent, but oh well. Uh, where are we? So so there we go. So while read, uh, this is well, this is going to be so while read from this line. Uh, while we read, uh, and if I don't put anything, it'll read from standard input or whatever we feed it, right? So while read, but this will tell you what it's going to do. So we're going to read line, uh, do done, and then we're going to tell it what we want to read from. Uh, let's see. This is why I don't like cat. Catting into a while loop is stupid. It makes it into a subshell. Localizes it, variables are ignored. It's a horrible thing to do. So don't ever do that. That just there's so many stupid answers in Stack Exchange that have cat this to echo. It's so stupid. Uh, uh, this learning series. <laughs> That's so nice. Uh, so here we go. So we go while read dash r line do we're 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 you know we're, we're doing this thing. Uh, that seems so bizarre. Oh yeah, you can totally do it. It's stupid. So, uh, I bet you can see how morphed into Perl equiv. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it almost does look like the Perl version. And I love some Perl. If you can believe me. So we're gonna read this for right now. Let's just echo the line. Now we might end up doing some print stuff with the line, uh, and we don't need to escape it or anything. We're just because because we're just testing stuff out, right? So this is it. Kind of you know incremental development mod plus x to get it to run uh we have to do it dot slash because it doesn't know about it here so this works right and then we're going to incrementally and agilely add stuff to it so the first thing we're going to add is we're going to say so i'm going to do a recursive descent sort of parsing algorithm on it this is why i'm telling you i've done a lot of stuff about parsing lately learning how to do recursive descent parsing will help you in all ways in all programming so uh, I don't know if I did see the video you sent me. I haven't. No, I haven't watched it. So let's see. So right now we're going to do this. We're going to do a basic, uh, uh, we're going to do a basic continuation. So we're going to say, does the line begin with, this is why we want bash. Does the line begin with a hashtag? Now that's safe in there because there's no glob expansion of any kind within double brackets. This is why bash double brackets are always your safest bet. And we say, and continue. So if it says, it says, if it starts with a comment, just keep, just skip it. All right. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Okay. Well, no, it doesn't because I got a mistake. I got some sort of mistake. Oh, dollar line. Duh. You don't have to quote anything in double brackets. Nope. You don't. Uh, usually. <laughs> Conditioner to be a binary operator. Expect a new line. Uh... What am I doing wrong here? So, oh boy, nice, nice chat there. Thank you, first time chatter. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. You got your lateral job. Uh, expand your knowledge. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to answer that question right now. You need to post that to my Discord AMA, and I'll answer it on Friday. I'm in the middle of a video right now. But since it's your first time chatting, let me just let me just let you know about that, okay? Uh, I, I'll be happy to answer that. I just want to answer it in a way that's consistent with all the other AMA questions, so everybody has a video to watch. And that'll be this Friday at six. That's when you'll get your answer, and you can watch the video. Please, please, please put that question in the in the Discord in AMA and hashtag AMA so I don't lose it. No, you're absolutely fine. I, I encourage you to interrupt if you have questions like that, people, especially if you're a beginner. Just let me know. We'll we'll go. Uh, we're here for you. It's not, even if I can't answer you right away, somebody else in the chat might be able to. If you have questions you don't want to appear on the screen, by the way, just put anything with an, an exclamation point in front. That'll stop it from showing up on the screen when I have comments on the screen. All right. So while read dash r line do blah, 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 I have a bug in here somewhere. I don't know what it is. Uh, echo line. It should be fine. I don't understand why it's not working. There's some sort of parsing going on here because of this guy. Uh, I'm going to just try an if statement first and see if that fixes it. Sometimes it does. Uh, sometimes short circuit logic can bite you if you're, especially if you're beginning. So I'm going to put phi here. Yeah, see that? That doesn't like that. You know what that means? That means I have to, I know what the answer is. I just figured it out. You know, this is why when Rob Pike says uh, color is juvenile, I disagree. 
because Discord is in my about section. If you look at my about section, and if you're on Twitch, if you go to slash about, same same website, but go to slash about, you'll find it. You can go to github.com slash rwxrob. Uh, you can go there too. That has all my stuff. Backslash, that's what it needed. That's all. I just needed an escape. So it looks like that that specifically did need an escape. Um, yep. And uh, I'm sorry you'll have to wait for that answer for so long. I'd love to be able to answer everybody right, right away, but we get lots of questions. So... Uh, here we go. So syntax error near unexpected token done. Well, okay, let's keep looking here. Echo line. Uh, this has something to do with the ampersand. I don't know what. I mean, the, the, the octothorpe. Yeah. Yep. Something's not right here. I know, I, oh, duh. Now I feel really stupid. I put an if statement there. You can't have if in your short circuit. Bad. There. See that? Got rid of all those comments, right? So now all we're seeing is stuff that's uncommented, right? And that's all nice and everything. But let's actually also get rid of anything that just has spaces in it, okay? So we'll say this. We'll say it can either be start with anything that starts with that and or or anything that is just got a space as the first thing and ends with a slash. So let's do that. Let's say if it's got this and it's it got a beginning thing and it either it either has a comment or optional spaces and it, it ends. So that's a blank. I know you weren't planning on doing regex, uh, I know. <laughs> you weren't planning on doing regex, but now we are doing it, okay? So, uh, swapping exactly in DNS. I just want to have it, so you have to go watch the video. So if you're late, don't ask what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I can't go back and tell you. All we're doing is we're taking we're taking this, uh, so, solve.com, you know, we're, we're trying to take this so that we can swap between two different name servers with one toggle script. Just kind of a simple little thing so we can change it if we're on a if we're on VPN or something. So that's the main goal, right? And the first step we've got done so far is we've got it so that we have this really cool little bash line that says, uh, this is all recording for YouTube. Yeah, this is all YouTube stuff. Uh, and so what? So we're going to get, we got our name servers. There's the active ones. See that right there? Uh, zero bash opting to use Perl for almost everything. You know, I I was guilty of that too. Like last week, I finally switched from Perl back to Bash because I had to admit that the reason that I was that I was bagging on Bash was because it didn't do Unicode letter matches in its regular expression. It's a very very tiny esoteric thing that it doesn't do. Other than that, Bash does everything Perl will do. Everything. Uh, and so I, especially anything Perl 4 and above, I was like, it's a little bit weird syntax, but I'm fine. Plus I'm using bash every day all the time. So I personally have gone back to bash as my daily driver for scripting. Uh, it works for Docker files. I, you, I would never put Perl in my Docker file. I had, I found my, I made the decision because I was like, and I, you know, I love Perl. God, I love those. I love Perl. But I made the decision because I was in, a, in the middle of writing a little script like this and I had to keep in Perl and I had to keep looking up everything because I couldn't remember it. And I realized I only really need to hold one scripting language in my cognitive, you know, cache. And, and, and that's Bash. I mean, Bash is hands down the le world leader in, in scripting for everything. People even say, bat, you can just write a Bash script. They don't say shell script. They say Bash scripts. Uh, because it's the same language I use in shell. Yeah. Yeah. That Q macro, that's exactly what I, I've concluded. And I, I did have a love affair with Perl again for a while there. And I was like, hey, this is still really good for a lot of prototyping and stuff. And I probably will do it for that. But the, mat for, for the, mat the fact of the matter is right now, if I can't do it in Bash, because Bash can do everything, and I mean everything, and it can do, <laughs> it can do like multiple concurrency, it can actually even, you can even run servers. And, and, it's like, and if I can't do it in Bash, I go immediately to Go. Uh, is, but Bash is, is, is my wife now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. So because it's always there. So so I'm going to keep Bash fresh in my mind. It's very stable. It's everywhere. It works. Right. And and then I'm going to uh, go is going to be my other language. So Bash and Go are my my two systems languages. If I have to code in Python, I will. 
uh, God knows you have to, or if I ha if I have to use Perl, if, I, if I'm doing a lot of really intensive parsing, uh, I'm going to be doing that in Perl, no doubt, uh, because Bash is very verbose to do the same thing. Yeah, well, Python is fine. But Python is Python is insufficient in many ways for this stuff. Uh, my in my opinion. So, not to mention the fact that you never know if you're going to have Python. So, Python is just yet another language you have to keep in your head, and I would rather not. The only other language I want in my head besides the language that I'm using on my shell every freaking day is Go. And if I have Go in my head, then if I have something that doesn't work here, I need strict typing, I can go to Go. And then, and then anything else is a domain-specific language. Web, Python is ML and automation. Those are languages you have to pull up out of the cache and swap into your cognitive memory. Fine, but I don't want to have to do it all the time. The two languages I want at my fingertips anytime are Bash and Go because <laughs> that's what everything's written in, right? So, uh, yeah, this is Tmux course. Uh, I'm on a, I'm on a, yeah, this is Tmux. Yeah, Tmux is my IDE. Tmux is my IDE. Uh, so anyway, so we wrote this little script here. I only have six minutes left. We're probably going to go over our time a little bit. Um, and so we've got the first part done. It's like, it's, it's pulling out the script, right? So let's, let's finish up. See if we can finish in five minutes. Probably not. Uh, and so we've, we've broken up this line. You can unpack this regular expression later, but this means at the beginning, either uh, a comment character or and anything after that, or any number of spaces that end and are just spaces. So this, these three things here represent any blank line. This one represents any line that begins with a hashtag. And then when we end that, uh, you know, you can do, you can do it like that, right? Uh, and that says, this says skip any comment lines or any blank lines, okay? Uh, uh, so then the next thing we're going to do is, uh, yeah, because um, of my NumPy. Yeah, people use Python because of NumPy, and that's fine. Uh, yeah, I, we're not going to have a language debate here. If you're doing machine learning, yeah, do Python. But, it, you know, I don't need it in my memory cache. If you're a data scientist or machine learning people, Python is your one of your like top memory, you know, cognitive memory things. It should be there all the time. I, I completely agree. But I'm not doing that stuff. I'm doing infrastructure stuff. So um so yeah. All right. Um what else do we got? So so that's the we're filtering out our line. But we actually don't just want that, right? We want to uh we kind of want to say, okay, if it's this line, skip it. But we need to change it. Now, this is where our parsing comes in. We need two states. Yeah, we need to do some states here. And so we're going to add some states. We're going to say, am I in? Uh, I'm going to say my state is going to be, uh, am I in? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what we call it? In net. How about that? In net config. That's like a big, long one, right? So, uh, so if I'm in a net config, and right now we'll say false, and we can say false because Bash has Boolean, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we say this. So, and then we say uh, we'll say net. We'll say current. I mean uh, net. Net. And I like underscores and this kind of stuff in net config. Uh, equals false, and then we have current net equals blank. Right, so that's this is our state. So state, uh, and we're going to parse. So every time we parse a line, we're going to check the state, right? And we're going to say, uh, I can just I just don't need that. All right. Um, see you, Kimiako. So the first the first thing we're going to check is while I'm reading a line, do what state am I in, right? So and we need to detect these the beginning of these states. And I could write a big you know pagan notation for this if I wanted to. I don't need to. I can just say this. I can say if actually no. We can just uh, well, let's do let's do. We need two lines here, so let's not do a short circuit. Let's do the full the full thing. So if uh, the line begins with uh, a, we learned that we had to backslash this. So if it begins with uh, this, and it has the word net in it, okay, uh, we did that. That was kind of our little thing, right? Then we're in a state. All right, so then we can do this. We can say uh, current net equals, 
uh, the line and we're going to chop everything on the line off up till the colon. Okay. So that's what this is. This says chop everything. It's not, this makes it greedy. That says chop everything from the beginning up to the colon, chop it off. Right. And for, for grins, uh, we'll just put an echo, uh, uh, current, uh, net, we'll take, we we'll get rid of this later is, uh, current net. All right. And, and then what we say, are we in a net? Yes. So in net config, uh, equals true. All right. Now, uh, but we also have some other fun stuff here. So let's try, let's try our first one. Okay. So let's just see what it does. Uh, it did not detect our stuff. If the line begins with hashtag net, did we, did we screw something up? What did we, screw up? let's go see net. Oh, there's a space. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to have to say optional space. So space optional. And then we're going to say, that's right now. All right. Didn't do it. Uh, our matches. Yeah. I'm going to go back. Oh, 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 I did it wrong. Duh. Uh, 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 the, the common character has to come at the beginning, but after that we can, we can say, okay, you have one or more spaces. That's fine. So that's fine. If you want to do fancy stuff, with space. okay, so there we go. So the current net is external and then the current net is internal, right? So that's changing our state and then we, we can make decisions based on the state, but see, what do we want to do here when we're parsing it? Right? So uh vi resolve.com um i'm going to give myself another 25 minutes pomo uh duration 30 minutes there we go all right so uh hopefully i'll be finished in 30 minutes you guys can help get me on track uh when they do it yeah and all right so so that okay so here we go we got so when we get to, now what if I had another comment here, right? Oops. Uh, sudo uh, vi etsy resolve.conf. So what if I have another comment here, right? What if I have uh, uh, another comment, right? We don't want that to be in the state, right? So what we want to do is if I have a blank space, that should end the stanza. Right, so we want to change our uh, our script to do that. Now, again, this is where knowledge of recursive descent parsing is kind of useful because we 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 are doing this. We're writing a parser, and so then we say this. We say if um, okay, so we have another case here, right? So we can say so. So we'll say here. So right here we we'll say uh, actually we can say detect uh we'll just say start of new uh net all right new net we'll just say how about this how about this net so and then this one we're gonna have we'll say end net end net all right let's say this is the end of a net it's the end of a net uh so how do we detect an end of a net well if i am in a net config um in net config and right if i'm in a net config and i have a blank line so how do i do a blank line right uh a blank line is this one any number of spaces uh followed by you have to i mean that's optional spaces there i mean I've been burned by having like spaces on blank lines before. So that's what that says. That says I have a blank line. And then you can say line equals, that means it matches that. Uh, then phi. So if I have uh, a network line and a line, so that means I'm out. So I can say in net config, changing the state to false. And uh, I'm going to set the current net to blank, right? Reset the current net. So that means I'm no longer in the network. So uh, the rest of the logic will. Now, if that was true, by the way, I can 
I, I know I don't have to keep processing anything, so I can throw a continue in here. I don't need to keep going down. That's the recursive descent part, right? So up here, I can say, if I detected all of this stuff, that's great. I can actually skip it and start over. So we're going to skip, go, go grab some more stuff. And, and then what? So now we've got the regular comments. If I get down to there, we just, we just skip those comments, right? So, uh, so actually now we run our script. I know it's kind of big, but whatever. <laughs> uh, we get, uh, I got an error there. What did I do? What did I do people? Uh, I think I, I don't think I can mix these to tell you the truth. Nope. I th can I do and dash a? I don't know. We'll see. Nope. Binary operator needed in in net config should work. Uh. Oh wait, wait. I don't need that at all. The. I always forget this with Bash, because that that is a that is a binary, so I can get rid of that. Yeah, so that's what we need right there. Yeah, uh, I I get burned by that all the time. Syntax error, uh, syntax error in conditional expression. Syntax error near. Huh. I don't see what's up here. I mean, I know another way to do it, but I want to make this way work. Actually, no, I think I have to, I think I have to put him in here. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, we need to, I don't, I don't know. This is a, this is going to be a review for me and Bash. D-Lang, yeah. Escape the space, I don't know. Mm -mm. You think? I don't, oh, you know what? I think you're right. I think you might be right. If in net, I think that might be it actually, because we did that on the other one, right? Yeah, because sure you can't put it in quotes. That that's 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 for sure. Uh, Linux first size switch. Hey, welcome, Magic. So there's lots of them. Oh, look at that. So that worked. Yay. So we got our internal and stuff and all that. All right. So uh, we can we can get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. Um, so here's the thing. All right. Uh, now we need to detect whether the networks are enabled or not. Right. And if we're, this is going into toggle. So it's going to, if it detects a network that's not enabled, it's assuming that, you know, I'm going to put that in here too. Uh, uh, assumes only two net, uh, entries and toggles with comments. So that's an important assumption, right? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, it does. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think it's extended regex. I still don't know which one it is. I don't know. I think it's extended regex. It's not PCRE. You know what? I'm going to find out. Does bash use PC? It's not. It's definitely not PCRE. I think it's extended. Yeah. I'm online. They are too. Yeah. Regular expressions, bash. Uh, uh, regex includes limiters. Does it? Nice. Uh, looks like pro regex expression. Bash does not support that. <laughs> uh, here we go. The, the Whatever operator is discussed here in the manual. Uh, bash uses extended regex. Okay. I, it's probably worth my time to learn extended regex. I'll put that in my to-dos. <laughs> to-do, learn. I I know PCRE really well, and I knew basic regex really well, or reasonably well. I've never actually learned the syntax for uh, extended regular expressions. They're kind of like Perl regular expressions, but not. But they're the same things that egrep uses, is the same things that sed uses. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so there we go. I need to learn it. I need to learn. Uh, I need to learn it. I mean, I, I, I know regex, but I just don't know the, the quirks of that particular one. <laughs> Bye, good work. Big Jim. I know I'm, I'm, I'm actually at work sort of, but I'm just 
taking a longer time to do this. I'll, I'll burn up my lunch break on it. Um, that's the great thing about not going in to work is I can take like a 15 minute lunch break and then I get back all that time. So I'm going to be able to Oui, j'ai, j'ai oublié que vous êtes le, le francophone là, au Canada. Oui, j'ai oublié ça, ça, ça j'ai oublié. All right, so we've got this thing. Now what do we need to do? Well, if we are in, here's here's another situation. All right, so here we are turning turning things on and off. Let's add another state. So uh, if disabled, if, let's see, if in uh, net, and disabled enable right and then we need another one that says uh if uh in net and enabled disable so that's the whole toggle thing of it right so this is the to do we need so i'm gonna put a to do here that's the to do we need and we're gonna do that so um yeah Okay, so let's do this. Uh, yes, I'm modding system config files. Yes, I am. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> I, there's a lot of, I mean, it's fair. Uh, Hadaway on YouTube says you're modding config. There are so many other better ways to do this, to change this, probably through official channels and stuff. I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just modding the the, the resolve comp directly. I don't care. I, I can figure all that out, but this is kind of a fun thing. Uh, to to do my to do list. Yeah, you can do all of that stuff. You can. When you learn to code, learn shell scripting. This is why bash scripting is so powerful because you can do anything in it like really quickly. And if you want to keep it, make it something bigger, you can do it in Python or Web or or Go. Right. So I, I, I'm, I'm not bashful about making a suggestion to learn shell as your first language. POSIX shell first, then bash. So you know what you're going to get in trouble with. Don't ever code in Z shell. You can use Z shell interactively if you want, but never, ever write a script in Z shell. It's dangerous because it's safe. <laughs> you're going to have to think about that one. If you know shell scripting, unpack that statement and you'll see why it's true. Z shell is dangerous because it's safe. And you end up, because it seems like POSIX shell, but it's not. It's safer, so you end up doing things. Never, ever, ever write a shell script in Z shell. I'm telling you, write it in POSIX shell or write it in bash. Don't write it in Z shell. There's two specific reasons that that's true, and I'm going to let you figure that out on your own. <laughs> There's two specific ways that Z shell tries to do the right thing and kills you as a developer because later when you write a POSIX free shell script, you write it using your Z shell assumptions and then you end up ruining the world by opening your whole system to floating point math errors and and to uh, off by one uh, stuff in, in other areas. But I, I kind of want you to discover that on your own. You can use Z shell interactively. If you want to, that's fine. Just don't script anything serious in Z shell. And I mean, it's a shell scripting language, so you wouldn't do it seriously anyway, right? But yeah, yeah. If you don't understand what I just said about why Z shell is dangerous, uh, go check my Zettelcast and read all my rants about Z shell. All right, uh, because that will help you understand. Z shell builds false expectations in your shell scripting mind, so that when you are asked to code a safe POSIX shell script. It also doesn't do, between, between single brackets, it doesn't do Globstar expansion. So what happens? You stop putting double quotes around things like you do with Bash, safely with double brackets. But Z Shell decided to say, let's make single brackets safe as well. And that's a, you know, that's a noble you know, cause. But what happens when you do that? Now you got people writing Z shell scripts that go, I don't need to double quote my stuff in single quotes. Then you're asked to write a POSIX shell script. And now you, you, you submit a POSIX shell script. Now that can be hacked using Globstar 
parameter or you know uh whatever shell shell expansion within the single brackets because you didn't learn it right you learned z shell which says i'm not going to ever do that you're safe here and now when you write a POSIX script which is virtually identical the difference is is now the hacker is going to see in your code that you didn't do in your root shell script that's running on the system you didn't protect your stuff with double quotes the way you should have in POSIX shell because you didn't learn that they were dangerous to do it that way because you learned it in z shell wrong <laughs> And now you just screwed the pooch because everybody can hack you. And you're like, huh, I should have learned POSIX shell scripting first. This whole idea of, of learning uh, of learning to code with the dangerous things first, so learning C first before Rust, for example, is based on that premise. You don't want to learn unless you're guaranteed to never have to write anything in any similar language ever, then, which is almost not true for anything, you want to learn to do it the, you want to learn to do it in the unsafe thing first so that you'll know the dangers and you'll go into the thing with, with caution and not this overconfidence that the language is going to protect you, which is some bullshit. So you want to know what they are. And then, yeah, I, one of the reasons I love Bash the most is Double brackets, which are never possible in well, they are in Z shell. Okay, you use double brackets in Z shell, you're good to go, right? Because Z shell doesn't really know what it wants to be. It's kind of K shell, but not. It's kind of bash, but not. It's another reason not to use it. Is you know you don't know what you can use in Z shell. You're like, can I use this really cool thing for lowercase uh, parameter expansion in Z shell? No, you can't in bash. So you keep hitting these like things. This is why you sh Z shell is like. If you are lukewarm, I shall spew thee out of my mouth. What's that Bible passage? <laughs> That's Z shell when it comes to scripting. It's neither unsafe like POSIX, and it's neither like, you know, bash, which is just bash. I always give the suggestion to learn C first before Python. Probably a good idea. So anyway, <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I like this is, see, you know, there's no quotes here, right? Double brackets in every single shell scripting language are safe from expansion, from shell expansion. So you can do things. If, first time I saw this, I put my double quotes around. I put double quotes around this. Can't do it. Can't do it. It's like it has no idea what you're doing. <laughs> it's like you're trying to be safe. It's like, what? No, no, no. You don't need to double quote everything here. It's double quotes, idiot. But I learned to double quote everything because I learned POSIX right. I learned to be safe. And so I was overly double quoting everything. Double quote, double quote, double quote. Like this down here probably should have a double quote. By the way, you know, everywhere else, there's still, you know, shell expansion going on. So it's only within double brackets that you're totally safe. So I feel nice and cozy because double brackets are always shape, safe from, from expansion. Always. And, that not, and any, there is no shell scripting language where expansion happens within double quotes. It's one of the reasons they were added. And that makes me very happy, even though it's a little bit harder to read. So anyway, and it also makes you able to do regex stuff, right? Because otherwise I couldn't write this this way. Uh, you never even thought of, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I, I'm glad you said that. That's very nice to say. I like, I like helping people realize things. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. All right. So if, if, if we're in the net, we only got 13 minutes. Can we finish this whole script in that time? I think we can. Uh, yes, you can. That's, yeah, you can use character class for space if I wanted to. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a POSIX thing, but I, I'm not going to use that right now because I just, I just need the space. Yeah. Uh, later, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll learn some C later. Um, yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, I did too. I always do. Yeah, I, it's unfortunate. You know what, though? Z, that, Zioc, that's because, so I'm talking to Zioc on Twitch. That is... That's because we're, I'm used to, we're probably used to Perl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. You know what that though, that worked. So that's interesting. Yeah. I'm, we're used to Perl and in Perl, you don't have to do this. How's it going? So, so you don't, so that, so Perl has ruined us. So you and me, <laughs> we're going to go back and we're going to go through extended regular expressions and use those as a new standard. So I want to have extended regular expressions top of my mind, even though PCRE is the standard for Go and Perl and Python and everything else. 
But if you're going to pick Bash as one of your primary languages, you have to totally master extended regular expressions to know the difference between PCRE. And PCRE are supported by every other major language, JavaScript, Python, Rust, Go, everything. So learning both of them is probably, probably worth it. It's annoying. It's bad enough learning one of them. <laughs> and then you have to learn two. Uh, so anyway, but if you do that, then you can e-graph and all kinds of fun stuff, right? You don't have to do PCRE graph. You ever play with PCRE graph? PCRE graph is pretty fun. You can use Perl on your regex. No, but no system has it built in, right? Uh, is regex on the command line so much? Learning that will be a super helpful. I think you're right. I, I agree. I'm with you. I've never actually sat down with extended regular expressions and really gone through them from getting down. I'll probably do that on the stream. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to never have touch Perl. So you started with the extended regex? Yeah. Well, it's it's nice. Yeah, Grain says on YouTube that he never had the experience with the Perl stuff. But here's the thing, Perl has gone on to influence every other language. So if you you can't use extended regular expressions in JavaScript, uh, Go, Rust, <laughs> Python, they all use PCRE. So so if you're going to code in those languages, uh, you still have to learn the PCRE style and you'll like it. It's, it's actually, I have a feeling it's not much better. The biggest annoyance I have also, VI, I think VI uses extended, right? So your Vim scripting will get better. Your Vim scripting will get better because you'll be able to do like all kinds of crazy X stuff. I think X does, X uses, is, uses X, right? So I think it's worth the time to go through it. I'm glad we talked about this because I, I have, I've been putting off learning extended regular expressions for some time. Uh, so anyway, so we have to comment out, we have to backslash out that space. Normally we wouldn't have to do that. Actually in Perl, we would have done this. And that means white space, right? Non-white space is like that, so. Uh, we'll just do that. All right, so let's go back to the topic at hand. So if I am in net and I'm disabled, then enable. All right, so let's write that. If uh, in net config, uh, I don't, do I have to have config there? No, I'm, I'm like, no, no, I don't need that. It's too, it's too verbose. I don't like overly verbose code. That's one of the main things I like about Go idioms. The Go idioms are like really, really short and sweet. You don't, and you don't get lost. You think you would, but because it's all within the scope of a small block, you still, you see the A is up there and you know what it is and it's still visual, visually. And, and so you don't have all this. Sometimes long names can actually distract from readability. And, and that's a kind of an unpopular opinion with some people, but I, I love, I love short identifiers a lot of time. Uh, so in net and, uh, what if we're in the net? Um, all right, so we're not on the .NET line for sure. So we could say, and the line begins with a comment. If the if we're there, and the line begins with a comment, uh, and it, there should never be anything else besides stuff that begins with a comment. Uh, then what? Oops. Then if I. So if we're on the line, if and then we're disabled, and the line begins with a comment, we're going to continue, and we're going to say, uh, we could just uncomment it. So this is actually pretty easy. Uh, we could, oh, you know what we have to do down here? We have to actually echo all this stuff out. Yeah. You know, I was going to just skip the lines, but we actually need, we, we, we can't skip lines. We need to echo the line. We just need to modify the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna do. All right. So so here we go. Uh, you could do this entire thing with a single regular expression. By the way, you could do this with a PC uh, with a Perl pi command. Um, but yeah, yeah, people do. But I, I it depends on what language you're in. So so in net, I'm gonna say. So if we're in that in the lines of comment, we want to uncomment it. So, so actually, we're going to echo. Um, I've tried to decide whether we should just change the line and then let it go all the way to the bottom and then echo. This is where people used to do all the time. Yeah, for recursive descent. Sometimes if you just want to modify the thing and then jump ahead past all the other stuff, you can do that or you have a break or something or you have a case statement. Um uh, case statement wouldn't work here but if we had it we could do a switch and we could do the whole thing so because I'm, if i if i'm going to continue to do this continue the way i'm doing it 
uh, and I want to be able to print every line, I'm going to have to echo the line after I change it. So I'm going to have to do echo line. Uh, there's just no way around that. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's a couple different ways to do this. This is, you know, because I'm about to modify the line here, right? So in this particular case, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to modify the line directly. Uh, and I'm going to change it so that it, it reads, um, it takes off any of the, the hashtag. It's going to be weird. It takes the hashtags off as many as there might be. Uh, and we're going to read all of them. So if they've used two for some stupid reason, they've used hashtags, we're going to delete those off. And then we're going to continue. And down here, actually, we can reduce, change this, this little thing. Uh, yep, we can change this uh, to be the opposite. So if we're, if we're, oh wait, if I'm in a net and disabled, if in a net and the line does not begin with thing, I don't think that's a command. I think it's this and not line equals this. So that means it doesn't begin with a comment, then we're going to comment it. Then echo the line, uh, but we're going to replace the first character. I mean, just, I could modify the line or just put a comment here. Who cares? <laughs> just put a comment like that, right? And just do that. Uh, and now it's commented out. We can get rid of this line. And so this, this should actually cover it. This should do the whole thing. So let's try it. Um, there we go. So wait, it didn't, it didn't print the comments. Uh, wait, where's my other comments? Did it get, did it get skipped? Did I skip the comments? Echo line. Oh wait. Oh no. Hmm. Echo line continue. That, no, that should be fine. Why did it get rid of those comments? I don't get it. Another comment. There's some, oh, I know why. Because our stuff is wrong. So if we're in a network and the line does not begin with a comment, add a comment. If we're in the net and disabled and it begins with comment, then change it. Hi, uh, Svasinat. And so let's see here. I, we're missing something. I don't know which one it is. Let's see if we made it to here. So uh, actually, we can go way up here and say uh, echo, you know, echo, just to see if it's working. Echo line, line, and that'll kind of we can show our, can show us our transformation. So we can go watch it now. So. This is a line, and then it, it, it killed it. So it is a problem there, right? Uh, line this, line this, line this, line this, uh, line this, line, name server, and then they commented it, right? So that did the right thing. That did the right thing. Uh, there's something happening with comments there. I don't, I don't know what's up. There's like, there's some extra parsing that's not doing it. Uh, spell backwards, stop it. Yeah, I know. It's, that's from Ada. I'm, I'm sorry, um, Algol. Algol language created that. So, so we have in, what do we got here? Um, let me, let me check. I got a Slack message here. Let me just check on something at work. Uh, I think I'm clear. Okay, and then I'll take a break after this. We're about done. We're about done. We've almost got the transformation done, and then the only other thing we have to do is swap the files out in a way that's safe. Uh, I, I love bashisms. I've changed my mind on them. I'm good with them. I like POSIX first, but if I know I got bash, I'm using bash instead of Perl. That's my current position. <laughs> my chase tomorrow, <laughs> but that's where I am. I just love bash. I'm just going to openly admit it. I love bash. I love it. I, I was so sad when I started writing everything in Perl versus Bash. So it feels good to be back. I did it all of 2020. I allowed myself to do Bashes. Um, which one? Telling spell backwards. Oh, the algal thing. Yeah. It is. It is. I mean, it. you know, it's, it's, it's got problems. You know, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie. It's got problems. 
So why are those things getting commented out? They should not be getting commented out. Um, you know what I wonder? I don't. I don't think my detection is getting is getting done. Yeah, let me try something. So I want to echo the state. Echo in net. Uh, in that, I think my state's getting screwed up. Yeah, it's not doing it. No, it's not. It's not getting down. That one of these, one of these is actually resolving is correct. This one is resolving is correct, and it shouldn't be. If I am in a network, see. All right, so let's try this. Oh yeah, that's the problem. So those other ones are reading the state incorrectly. So that means something about my state reading is wrong. So let's go figure that out. Uh, oh, it's the blank line stuff. This is not happening. It's not. It's never. It's never turning it off. Uh huh. That's not good. Um. Uh, so in net equals false. Current net equals this. Does this actually put a string in there? I might, need, I might have to declare this. This is a bash thing. I think it did. I think it put the. I think it put a string in there. Yeah, it did because I didn't declare right. This is a bashism that is burning me from shell. Uh. If you want a boolean, right? I mean, the 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 POSIX e way to do this would be to actually just use a shell script instead of a boolean. You can do booleans, though. Yeah, that's 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 what's killing me because 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 it's always true because false is true because it's got a string in it. You know what I mean? So so that that is not cool. Uh, I've thought you could do must be tested against values on and off. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you, you don't want to mess around with bash. So, you know, that's more POSIX E2. So let's do that. I'm not going to overthink this. So, uh, <laughs> relatively beautiful. <laughs> uh, let's see this. So, uh, in net equals yes. How about just Y? And so we can just say, no. You know what we can do? This is another one, right? This is another. This is a POSIX friendly way to do this. However, if you do this, you I think you have to put quotes around it. I I got burned by that before. Let me let me test this. So, I'm gonna test this. This is my foo there. So we can say in bash. Um, uh, dash Z, some, I can do this on the command line. I don't even do, do it here. What am I doing? Uh, some equals blank. And then uh, dash Z, some, and echo, yes. See? Oh. Huh. Now let's put something in there. Yeah. Oh, that makes me happy. That's proof positive right there. That is nice. That means I don't need quotes. Yay. All right. So, um, yeah. So, in net, uh, if in net, if in net and line, thanks for the follow. Uh, so if we're in the net and the line equals that, if we're in the net and the line equals this, if we're in the net and enable disable, um, all of this works now. See, because I can just add dash Z's here. If dash Z, that means are you false? Uh, and net, uh, actually no, we want to do dash N. Dash N is, is, are you true? Are you filled with something? 
Um, thanks for the follow there. Um, so then we can go here and do if dash n, if in net, if this, okay, so if in net, so dash n in net means we got something in there. Uh, and this is actually a nice POSIX way to do this. You would normally put quotes around it though. And double brackets only people, right? We tested that. Uh, if in net and enabled, then disable. Okay. If, I have a feeling this is going to make us much happier. Uh, there you go. Script is done. Minus two minutes over. So you see what it did? Oh, that comment. Oh, look at this. It did not detect the end of a network there. <gasps> what? So I end of network detection failed. So we got to go figure that out. I think that's the, the space match is screwing up. So end net. So, uh, you know, let's do, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do, uh, let me say echo. I saw, this is a technique I use a lot, uh, in net for parsing to tell when the events change when you're, when you're modifying a stream. So that we can say, uh, in that I put a slash here just cause it's like XML, I don't care. And yeah, so watch, you will see right now that it's not going to change it. You see what it does? It does in that and then it, it does wait. Well then something else is wrong. Cause that actually worked. I'm glad I did that. That's a good debugging thing I just did. Yep. Yep. Uh, so if in net and disabled, enabled, no, uh, we're missing something. I don't know what current net. Oh, false. That was the problem in net equals Y. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Good catch, Rob. <laughs> uh, and let's try. So in net, another comment that worked. And then we're out of net, and then we're in net again. You can't, I'm not using true. Yeah, it was the true. You can't, we can't use true false. I'm not going to do that. It's too, it's too problematic. I'm just going to do empty and, and, and because that technique of using empty variables and, and something with them actually is safer positively too. So I'm going to go to, that's what burned me because false is true. Yeah. Setting something to false without declaring a variable initially to be a Boolean. Which I don't know if you can even do that. Let's see if you can. Does bash? I well, bash has booleans. I know it does, uh, but I think you have to declare the variables to be booleans. Otherwise, it'll put a string in there. Uh, so, and bash. I searched the whole thing for bool. True. I think true. Yeah, you cannot. You can have true if the condition is true, but you cannot have. Uh, you cannot have it be in, there's no true type. False is true because false is a string. And so if you evaluate a string by itself, it's probably going to be true. That's the same, that's in Python too, by the way. Um, so rather than be confused, we're just going to use Z and N. You either have something in a string or you do not. Um, uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, Boolean values must be tested against the values on and off. Variable provides simplicity. I just don't trust Booleans at all. And the technique that I just used is well established in shell script scripting. So I don't want to confuse people with why are you using true or false, sir? Because it's just it's too dangerous. Shell scripting is too dangerous. I'm not going to do that. So we'll use the, the, the age old technique of having an empty variable or something in a variable and, and POSIX they used to put an X in front of it and that would get them uh, against, that would help them avoid golf star expansion, but we're not going to do that because we're using double brackets, which is modern and happy and healthy and wonderful. Uh, so I think our script's done. Yep. Uh, gotta be decent because I forgot the, the, <laughs> oh my gosh, join the cloud. Uh, okay, so this is the entire file. The only thing different about this file, as you can see, and we're going to prove that, uh, is I'm going to get rid of my print statements. God knows that's burned me before. You ever had that burn you? Burn ya? I'll get rid of them completely. All right, so one more time. All right, so let's actually do a little thing here. 
Let's do reserve toggle. We'll send that to override uh, temp foo. And, and now let's diff temp foo from uh, etsy resolve.conf. And what do we got? We see that the only things different are the name servers are commented out and this name server comes. So that is a successful test. You know, it doesn't have to be all scripted out to be a good test, test-driven development. So this output of this toggle script is safe now. We know that the output is safe. That's the most important thing. Before you change a system script, you want to be careful. The only atomic, you never ever want to change a file in place in Unix, any brand of Unix, because you'll get a race condition eventually. Because the, as far as I know, the file system does not do any file modifications that are not atomic. The only atomic operation you can do, the closest thing you can do, is to create the new file and then move the new file over the top of the other one and change the name. And that changing actually does something to the iNode registry, and I believe that change is atomic. And so this is what I've been taught to do, um, you know, or, you know, people who do this all the time. So that means that we're going to take this resolve.conf and, and uh, all of this stuff that's coming out of here. Uh, most people don't do that. No, they don't. And they'll just modify the file. And that's actually super dangerous. And it's not atomic and blah, blah, blah. Or using files for locks and stuff like that. Ugh, it's super dangerous. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to wrap all of this up into a function. And I'm going to say toggle. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just all here. Uh, I mean, I can do this the hard way or the easy way. But I need to go through every line anyway, so whatever, I don't care. Probably should have made a function. I, I didn't even follow my own advice there. My own my advice generally is always make a function and then just call the function so you have you know portable code that you can change. Uh and then you know down here you would just call toggle, right? So but in this case we're gonna have the whole function. Let's make sure we didn't break anything. Some regression testing. Regression testing is when you run it again and make sure you didn't break anything. <laughs> And God knows we need to do that, right? Even if you think it's a tiny change, it didn't break anything, do it anyway. So that creates this function and calls toggle, so that's all good. Uh, I can actually call toggle in here and write it to temp foo. Uh, this will clobber if you have no clobber set. So we're going to do that. Um, yeah, and that should give us the same diff. Where's our diff? Yeah, there. Okay, so everything is all well and good. And now the last thing we need to do... Uh, is we can write this to a temp file that we know is not going to get us in trouble, right? Uh, and so let's do that. We can just say, uh, I mean, we could do, yeah, we could, let's just try to make temp. Should we do that? Let's do the, I, I, it's going to tell me what file it is. Make temp. Um, the function signature doesn't feel like bash. What are we talking about? Oh, it is bash. I yeah, this is I I absolutely hate putting function in front of everything. I hate that. It's unnecessary. I don't like it. That's just me. I'm following bash's shell scripting guidelines from Google. <laughs> so Okay, let's do this. Let's say temp file equals uh, make temp and to temp file and we could say echo uh, wrote to I mean this I can change this to temp file uh, student student define a function for each question and copy and paste the use goes somebody actually told you to do that no I, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow Google style guidelines. <laughs> you can listen to your college professors. <laughs> there. So let's actually go see what's on there. And we have this wonderful file that we can now diff. It's for Bash. Yeah. Yep, it's a style guideline for Bash. You can't even put function in front of a POSIX shell function. It's one of the main reasons I don't like it. 
It's an unnecessary train. It's also the reason I don't like putting source in scripts. Usually, I should. Sometimes I do. I give in on that one on Bash because it's readable. I get it. But, you know. So the only other thing we need to do on our script before we're done, and I can close this video down. I'm 12 minutes over. Oh, you asked the student to use functions. And they just put their answer in the functions and copy in between, between the answers. Oh, <laughs> I misunderstood. That's kind of funny. <laughs> that, that's... That's kind of funny, actually. Spassy not. So toggle. Uh, <laughs> I'm still chuckling about that one. All right. So we're going to move this. Uh, so, you know, another thing, too, is do you want to back up your original? You know, if you wanted to, this is where you can do it, right? If you really don't trust your script. I trust my script enough now to use it. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna say, uh, this is this is dangerous, right? Because we're about to override a system script. And for this, we're gonna actually need sudo access. So we're gonna move uh, our temp file to, and this you do need to escape big time. And I mean to wrap in quotes. And, uh, and then what? We're going to say move temp, and we're going to move that to Etsy resolve.conf. Super dangerous operation. I'm not encouraging you to do this unless you know what you're doing or you're doing it on a container first. And I'm on a container right now. I'm going to say it again. What I use it for to try to tell me when to stand up and walk around. Right now, it's just yelling at me because it's way over. I need to end this video, but we're about done, and then I can go do something else. Uh, so, the moment of truth. Again, how many times do I have to say it? I'm in a container. I'm in a container, so if I blow the container away, no one's going to yell at me, including me. Okay? I mean, it's like number one in the notes. Do this stuff in a container first. People ask all the time, I don't need to learn Docker. Why do I need to learn Docker? I can just do it. No. This is why you need to learn it right here. Because you need to do these kind of system experimentations with system scripts and stuff on a container. You do this stuff on your own system, do I have to justify that statement further? No, just use a container. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, um, so what? Uh, so let's actually run it. I'm a little scared, even though it's a container. This is that moment of pitter pat, you know, because it's like, is it going to work? Of course, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, oh, sudo move temp file. Um, I need this here. I need this here too. What's going on? Oh, it's trying to execute temp file because I'm such an idiot. I think I just blew away at my Etsy. <laughs> Use hypervisors? Well, that's fine too. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but it's not. it takes forever to get a hypervisor. But maybe you know, Meatloaf, you got to show me something about that. Because I want to see how fast you can get it. Because I like containers because they pop up real fast. This, this container is like that, you know. A spare machine? Oh, my God. You're so slow. <laughs> I, I'm just playing. Don't be offended. It's true, though. <laughs> All right. Resolve toggle. Uh, device resource was busy. Hmm. Do I have it open? Please tell me I don't have it open some other place. <laughs> I bet you I do. No, I don't. Hmm. Oh, I know why. No, that wasn't it. Damn. I have to set up a new workspace. Watch how fast it is. Two. All right. Two seconds to get myself up here. Right. Uh, uh, I, I just threw that whole container away. <laughs> That's how I dealt with the problem. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm not proud. I'm not proud. I'm not proud that I just completely threw that whole machine away temporarily because I didn't want to do it or anything. I just want to say it's got something busy in there. Okay, goodbye. I'll make a new one. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, this is this is way fun. Still busy. Hmm. I don't understand why this is. 
I don't understand what this is. All right, now I'm really going to watch this. Touch, blah. Move, blah. <laughs> do not do this at home, people, unless you have a container. I am telling you. I am blowing away my resolve.conf on purpose because I just want to. Okay. Override the mods. Yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. All right, let's try this. Device resource busy. Huh. That's interesting. That's really interesting. What is, is what type of file is that? I was not expecting this. I think it's a sim link or hard link. What? What? Slash L Etsy resolve dot conf. Root root. Um That's the size, right? That's not the hard link number, is it? This is the hard link number right here. So I don't know. I don't know why it thinks it's busy. I don't know. I'm going to have to look this up. I, I do not know. I, I was not expecting that error, obviously. Oh, no. We're not doing that. Not right now, anyway. Electricity. Wait, what? Oh, my God. Nice dad joke. What are you? You're my dad. My dad, his jokes are even worse. Uh, move media, media, blah, 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 uh, upgrade, blah, 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 start it. All right, fine. What do you got for me, Stack Exchange? Linux questions. Um, there's no LN link file going on. That's what I just checked for. Yay. Uh, you're tired. <laughs> Registered Croatia, of course. Move or move does not actually move the file or folder to the location. It rather replaces the pointer to the first sector in the first sector of your device. The pointer annotate will be moved, but nothing is actually being copied. Uh, this will work as long as you stay within the same media device. Now, when you try to move files from one device, oh, I forgot. You can't move across file system boundaries. Duh. Oh, I feel so stupid now. I haven't been burned by that in a long time. You can't move across file system boundaries. You have to be in the same file system. And since, yeah, I, I, I knew that. I just didn't remember. Uh, so, wait, what am I thinking of here? Mount. There's like all my mount points. Let's see, where are my devices? Oh, not do you. Do you have? Yeah, so I have a TempFS in this container. Uh, yeah, no, dev share memory probably. Yeah, I, I that's got to be it. I think that's it. I don't know. We're gonna try. Wait for a minute. The best I did on on, on Nitro Type is 108 once upon a time, but I don't claim to be a fast typist. I don't care. I, I'm about on a. I'm I average about 72. I'm old. My son is averages about 80 or 90. He's really good. He's young though. Uh. It's not about the typing speed. You need to be in your in 50, 60 range. You need, you need to definitely be over 30 to be able to get a tech job and do it well. I've, I've met people who have slower than that, but a lot of a lot of this stuff isn't about typing. And, and I'm not saying that because I'm slow at 72 or 5 or 10 or whatever. Uh, I absolutely suck with the uh, numeric rows. You'll see me messing up my symbols all the time. I've been doing this how many years? Over 30 years, and I still mess up the symbols. I st I'm I I'm not even proud, but I don't care. It's like I get work done. So uh, we need to put this file someplace else if we're gonna if we're gonna move it like that. I, either that, or we have to do a copy. Uh, so where's the last move we did? So let's actually do a copy. Oh no, we want our original resolve though. So it's your resolve. Dot comp. Oh, look at this. This one doesn't have the, the network in there. So it's not going to do anything. So, yeah, let's do this. Let's say... Yeah, God damn it. Okay. Um, first things first. Let's... Uh, 
let's detect. We should probably put a state in here that detects if there was any changes or not. And doesn't do anything. It leaves a file alone if there's no change. Otherwise, we're going to change the sudo from a move to a copy. And uh, what is the perms on the file? Just to, just to be sure. It's, uh, was that 644? So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's the standard. I don't need, we need, I don't think we need that. Let's just resolve the cop. Yep, that worked. So I have to do a copy. That was it. I don't think it's atomic. It's not, right? Yep, that's right. I, I don't think it's atomic, but I think it's as fast as we're as good as we're gonna get in this particular case. So so yeah, so Etsy resolve.conf. And yeah, it did it, but there was another change. So last test of truth before I finish this up this video. And we can store I can store this thing in my scripts directory and go to down. I won't show you anything about that. Let's go ahead and give this a oops, I need to go back to sudo land. Uh, resolve.conf. Oh, fuck, I hate this thing. All right, so let's call this uh, net. Uh, we don't even need to care. We could just say a rig. And we could say uh, net uh, other. And it doesn't matter. It's just, it just needs that stuff there. So two, I could add, I don't know, let's add like, like Google's DNS servers. And 8.8.4.4. I'll leave the decision to use Google's DNS and owning you up to you. <laughs> but talk about caching all the information on the planet. Everybody's sending their DNS to Google, which means they can monitor every site you ever search for or ever visit, ever, by popularity, just by mining and stuff off name servers. So probably not a good idea, but we're going to do it just for fun. Uh, they're both activated, though, so that's a bad thing. Uh, we need to turn off these. All right, so let's let's try our, our thing one more time. And now I can go look at the result.conf and you can see it enabled other servers and I run it again and I go look and now those are active and I can go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that fun? I do that all day. Because <laughs> it works. It just works. As probably the end of this video, uh, I can go ahead and uh, if you're doing this on a container, make sure you have something mounted to keep your script. If I had just left the container like I did recently, I would have lost my work uh, if I had not mounted this script. So in case you're wondering, this is in a, a program. I'll give you a copy. Uh, it's called WS. And it, it manages my workspaces. Uh, whoopsie. Uh, let me do it again. There's your WS. Uh, so this manages your workspaces uh, for me and it, it keeps them all in a nice, happy um, <coughs> uh, home workspaces directory. So anytime I make a new thing, it mounts that as my home directory and then I can go in there and anything that I've been doing on that. So if I have to re bring up the container again, I just it just throws the whole container away and except for everything in this directory. And that's nice because now I have my script and I can go back to my scripts directory and I can copy it, I guess, for safekeeping. Workspaces, uh, toggle, what do we call it? Resolve, uh, what do we call it? Resolve, toggle, tog, resolve, tog. I'll put it in here and then I'm gonna add a resolve, tog. Uh, look at what I got to change in here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and commit that add resolve tog uh, script for DNS toggling uh, all right so conf I get enough there okay so then I can do git push and that's a that's an increase so I can up the infinite thing and it, up my these, these are all just wrappers for GH, the GH tool, which I absolutely love. Uh, this one actually is a, a wrapper for Git. And so I'm all tagged and available. You guys can go check it out at rwxrob slash dot. 
and you can view the code and uh, go into the scripts directory and you can find the script in here what do we call it resolve dot resolve give me a, a star and a like and a sponsor if you feel so inclined over there uh, but that's that's it so there we go there's your little toggle script I like this because it, it does show how knowledge of recursive descent parsing can apply to simple shell script, you know. Uh, it's somewhat easy to keep track of. It's it's It does have regexes in it, mostly just for the individual matching. And that's all I got for you. So I'm going to actually kill the stream. I will bring it back with some music. Uh, I'm going to go for a run. And when I come back, I'll, I'll probably be doing some stuff with Jupiter Hub later in the day. I'm going to be doing some more kind and Helm chart setup. Uh, nothing that would be uh, suitable for publishing as a YouTube video, but if you want to follow along, I'm going to keep the camera on today. I'm, in general, uh, I, I'm going to try to keep the camera on a little bit more later. I know people like to see me talk and stuff when I'm working on stuff. And where I can do that, I will do that. If I don't have meetings scheduled during today, for a while I was doing that while I was on meetings, and people are like, why is he talking on mute? Um, but if I'm doing you know, stuff that, this, I mean, this stuff is all work related. Then I can, I can continue to do it, even though I can share it with you, and I'll, I'll do that co-working with you. But um, don't count on it. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do AFK. Thank you so much. Do 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 do.